Gospel Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. Um, I know it takes a while for people to join the room, so I shall waffle a little bit. If you're new to the party, welcome. Um, all of our previous episodes are on our Clarity Stamp Facebook and YouTube page. So you can go back and watch all of the previous episodes of Groovy Tuesday right from the beginning. There we go. I can see people coming into the room. Good morning, Susan. Welcome. So Susan's in the room so far. There we go. Jacqueline. Good morning, Jacqueline. Helen, here you all come. Welcome to another Groovy Tuesday. Good morning, Sharon, Catherine. There we go. Um, Stuart's in the room with you today, so hopefully you can hear me and I'm not just sort of doing, um, I'm not just going like that, but you can't hear anything. Good morning, Jill, Gillian, Hilary. There we go. Anja, I just wait for the all clear from Stuart. Morning all, watching in the car. Good morning, Karen. Well, I hope you're not watching and driving. I hope you're a passenger. So, um, yeah, we don't want any of that, do we? Um, there we go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everyone's coming in. Pull up a chair. Grab a grab a drink, tea, coffee, cold drink, warm drink. There we go. That's from Stuart. Sound is good. Thank you, Stuart. So technology. Don't even have to look at my phone. I can just look at my watch. So um, yes, Margaret, the sun is shining here as well at the moment. Um, well, it was when I came in here. By the time I leave, it could be torrential rain. It sure has been a bit freaky this um, last few days, hasn't it? What's the weather like with everybody? I've seen sunshine. Um, yeah. Loud and clear. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, everybody. Um, so, yeah, another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I'm determined to finish this Christmas tree today. Um, that we've been working on. Um, and then I'd like to move on to Linda's stocking, so to speak. <laughs> and if you're wondering what's he going on about, these are the um, plates we've been looking at, designed by lovely Linda Williams. So we've got a special offer on at the moment. Um, we've got a Christmas tree and we have a stocking. Um, and we've been looking at the Christmas tree and I want to finish this one off this week. And next week, I want to start on the stocking. So, um, yeah, I know it's mixed weather, isn't it, everywhere at the moment. Um, I will sort of say in advance, um, we've got a, another office just up the road. It's literally five minutes in the car where we used to be based before we relocated to Fircroft Way. And um, Dave's just been on the phone. Apparently, they've got a power cut up there. So if I disappear unexpectedly, it means... We've had a power cut as well. So I'm just giving you that little bit of warning that if all of a sudden the screen, the video stops and it goes blank, it will be due to a power cut. So, um, so yeah, all good fun. Don't know whether it's the rain or whether it's just technical issues. Um, but Dave rung me about 10 minutes ago and said, were we okay here because he didn't have any power? So, um, so yeah, so I thought I'd give you the heads up. If I, I disappear suddenly, <laughs> that will be the reason. And the thing is in here, there's no windows and it's just pitch black <laughs> if the power goes. But I've got a, a torch on my phone, so that'll be fine. So how is everybody? Staying dry and warm during all this horrible weather? Jane says put 50p in the meter. If only it was that simple. Who remembers putting 50p in the meter? I definitely remember that. Gosh, yeah. Had to go to the shop and change up um, sort of pound coins and five pounds and 10 pounds for 50p's. Because the bank was such a long way. So you had to go to the, the local shop and hopefully they had loads of um, spare change in the till. I wonder if they still have a lot of change in the tills because I'm sure now with the way technology moves, a lot of people pay with their card, with it tapping or um, things, yeah. Mm, the way things change. 
Okay, so as I said, we're going to be looking at um, finishing off the Christmas tree. And this is the piece where we're sort of heading towards, created by the lovely Linda. And we've got the lovely car blanks as well that Mr. Dave makes when he has power um, on his big old platen presses. Um, Marilyn, how do you hold the scissors for Pico Reggie because I'm left handed? Okay, Marilyn. Well, we're going to have a look at some um, Pico cutting today because we're going to finish off cutting out our trees. Um, and the way in which I hold the scissors in my right hand, Barb holds them exactly the same in her left hand. Um, so we'll show a few different sort of combinations um, and hopefully um, we'll cover that for you. I remember putting a shilling in. Wow, no, I don't remember that. I only remember 50 p's. And then it went up to a pound, I think, didn't it? Didn't they change the meters so that it took a pound? And then they changed it completely. We then had a key that you had to go to the shop to top it up, which I suppose is easier in a way, isn't it? I remember my nan, she had um, the cupboard. It was like a little metal cupboard on the wall that had the meter in it. And it had a little shelf on there. And she'd have bags of 50 p's just in case she was halfway through watching a film and it went. You didn't get any warnings, did you? It just went and that was it. So keep digressing. Apologies. Right, okay. Um, so Mo works at Sainsbury's and we still use a lot of money. I feel the tills have changed, so it's still used quite a lot. Oh, that's interesting to know. So I would have thought everyone's sort of cardless now, or not cardless, but with their cards. But I'm sure there's still um, a high percentage of people that like to use cash. So, so Christmas tree we're looking at today. And then next week, because I am determined, I said we was going to finish this last week, but you know what, with me waffling. And then we're going to have a look at the, the Christmas stocking next week. Okay. And also today, I've got a sneaky peek of the one day special coming up tomorrow at 6 p.m. designed by the lovely Josie Davidson. So that should give you a little hint at what it might be. Um, and I've got the plates to show you. I've got some artwork to show you. Um, as always, the design team has done a fantastic job. Um, and a big thank you now in advance to Josie, Jane and Glynis for preparing the demos that I'm going to show over the course of the four hours. Um, but we'll come to that a little bit later. We'll get, we'll get about halfway through the hour and we'll have a little sneaky peek um, of what's coming up. I've just realised the clock on the wall is slow, so I'll have to keep an eye on the one that's on the computer. So it's about 10 minutes slow, so I'll have to put a battery in when we're finished. Okay, so let's have a, what else have we got? What's everybody saying? Let's have a catch up. One of one pulls up a chair. Yeah. Judith says, I try to keep some coins in my purse so I can give a bit to one of the homeless folks that are out on the streets, more and more of them. <clears throat> Sadly, that is the case now, isn't it? And I think in time, it will probably get a little bit worse um, with the way things are going. So, yeah. Right, okay. So let's have a bit of a recap. If you are tuning in for the first time, welcome. Let me know if it's your first time on Groovy Tuesday. Um, and you can go back and watch all of the previous episodes. I'm sure Stuart could pop a link up to the Clarity YouTube page, um, which gives you all the, the previous issues of Groovy Tuesday, all of the Shack Shacks with Barb. And then before Groovy Tuesday and the Shack Shack started, um, Barb used to do a YouTube Tuesday. Um, and um, there's a vast library of different step-by-step -step tutorials and, and everything else. So um, it's definitely well, if you're looking for an hour or 10 to, to kill, <laughs> then it's definitely worth checking out our YouTube. There we go, Stuart's popped the link up. Thank you, Stuart. Um, looking at our YouTube page because it's full of so much information. Um, but if you're more of a, a visual sort of like photos and written instruction, then we have the Clarity Matters blog. 
um, which um, lovely Gracie looks after. So on a Saturday, she does the Saturday share. And then on a Sunday, we have a step-by-step -step tutorial. For the month of November, we're getting all arty and inky and messy and ooh. <laughs> um this month but there's loads and loads of tutorials on there as well and obviously you've got barbara's blog where barb does often does step by step she lets you know what's going on upcoming tv shows upcoming events um what's going on in her garage um and when i say what's going on in her garage what i mean her pottery studio that sounds better does it it's not a garage it's a pottery studio so um so make sure you bookmark those and um check those out okay so let's have a recap on what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks okay so what we did when we look at the piece that linda's created you'll notice that the shades of green get darker and darker and darker okay and the reason for that is we're using one um piece of parchment but we've layered them up, okay? So by layering on top of one another, you'll get a different depth of color, okay? So for example, let me take the individual elements that Linda has created. So, 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 if I take my base layer and pop that down onto a white piece of card, then I take the next one, you can instantly see it's getting darker. And then we take the next one, and then the next one, then the next one, and then finally the layer on top. Okay, so you can see now how the depth of the color, and this will work with all of our colored parchment. Okay, hands up who took advantage of our parchment party at the weekend i saw a lot of names coming through so i'm sure plenty of you did so so yes so that's where we're sort of heading and what we've been doing and what we've also done you'll get everything out of one sheet of a4 parchment all right so you can go back and look at the previous episode to say how we got to this stage okay yes lorraine did chrissy did jackie did susan did yes plenty of you did um yeah okay then last week what we did the next stage was we perforated around the bottom part of the tree let's call it the skirt and the first one we cut out last week was this one okay so we pico cut around the bottom and then we use normal scissors to um, cut out the rest of the tree. So this week, we're gonna finish off cutting out, okay? And then we're gonna assemble the tree. So we're, we're being very um, environmentally friendly, sort of recycling, so to speak. <laughs> so what we're gonna need today, if you're following along at the same time, I've got my um, 12 by 12 super foam. Um, I prefer this because it's sort of like a larger area. I've got my piece of artwork, which I've already, as I say, perforated around the bottom. So if you want to see how that was done, um, that was last week's episode. And then we're gonna have a look at the, the different scissors. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in for this. Dum, dum, dum. Let me just stand up. Which way? Zoom in. Move it that way. There we go. See how close I can come in. Really, very close. Okay. Oh, nearly fell off the chair. <laughs> Okie dokie. So we have our ex oops, our exclusive scissors. We have our ring lock scissors and we have our perga cutters. Okay. And what you'll notice, let's open them all up so you can sort of see. They all have very fine tips at the end of them. 
And this is key when you're pico cutting. It's not the blade we're interested in, it's the tips, okay? Because it's only the tips that are doing the snipping, right? So we've got three different options depending on what works for you, okay? Now, when I first started, I used the exclusive because that's all I thought existed. And you'll also notice that all of them have a curve. Okay, so we've got curve on that one. We've got the curve on that one. And then we have the curve on that one. Okay, now I've held them all in the, what we call the spoon position. Okay, but you, they work upside down, if you wanna call it upside down. They work in what we call the fork position as well. So when I first learned um, pico cutting, the way that I, I learned was that I watched a YouTube on someone doing it. Um, and the idea was that you had the point going down and you took these two fingers and you popped them in like that. And the idea was that you went in, down, twisted and snipped. Okay, so you squeezed, twisted and snipped. And that was the way that, that I learned. And in a way, not in a way, I found it very sort of uncomfortable. Okay, I got a, a nice result because that's all I knew how to do. But then watching sort of like the other people do it, like the experts sort of like Linda, Josie, Glynis, um, Tina, everyone holds the scissors differently. So you don't necessarily have to hold them in the sort of downward position in the fork, okay? You can hold them in the spoon position. And what that means is that when you go into, let me come in on this camera, bear with, there we go. So when you go in, let me see if I can do it this way. So when you, whee, so when you, you've got the spoon position and you go in and you bring it down, then it lifts the parchment slightly to raise it so you can sort of work. If you do with the spoon position, it's the same thing, the parchment lifts slightly. My um, scissors of choice, I can use all of them, but if I'm gonna do a lot, like I will be on TV tomorrow evening, then I would either go with my ring lock or my perga cutters. And the reason being is because they have larger apertures, so they're more comfortable on the hand. And then depending on how I'm feeling, if I'm doing super snipping, like Josie, then I would use the, the perga cutters, okay? So when it comes to, to holding them, um, let's pop those two to one side. If we look at the ring locks, I'm gonna have mine with the curve going up, okay? And then I'm gonna come in underneath with my thumb and my forefinger. And then these two fingers here sort of act as a balance, okay? So it's the same if I was doing it left-handed, okay? So there's no difference in relation to if I was left-handed or right-handed on how I would hold them. This is what I find more comfortable for me. And then the other key thing is having a flat surface to work on if you're gonna cut on the flat, okay? And what I mean by that is when I first learnt, okay, I used to hold the parchment in my hand. I need my glasses, I don't wanna put my glasses on. Definitely gonna need these tomorrow, I mustn't forget these. There we go. So when I first learned, I learned to hold the parchment in my hand, okay? And then what that did, it acted, it was like a gauge on how far to put the scissors in, okay? So, because I could feel the tips of the scissors. So all I'm gonna do, I know you, you can't see it, let me go to the overhead now. So by holding it in my hand, I could feel how far 
the scissors were going in. Okay. And what I'm doing is my other, this arm is resting on the mat. But now I tend to find it uncomfortable. Um, whereas if I work on the, on the flat, there's no sort of pressure, so to speak. And all I'm doing is this hand isn't moving, okay? The only thing that's moving is the parchment. So I'm just putting the tips of the scissors in, leaning towards me. And then as I lean towards me, I'm squeezing, okay? And then I'm turning it around. But for me personally, I find it easier on the flat because what I can do, I can use this finger to act as a balance, okay? So I reckon we're probably about here. So now I can turn my parchment quite easily, especially when we're going around a corner or around a curve. Can we see this okay? Let me see, what's it look like on this camera? And what you're doing, you're going, you're putting the right hand part of the point back into the hole you've just come out of. So just like perforating, you're only pico cutting one perforation at a time. Okay. I think that's where I perforated, went a bit dodgy last week. So I'm using the tip of the scissors to pivot parchment. It's just habit, really. But now my right hand is comfortable. There's no pressure. And the left hand is just moving the parchment. Okay. So I'm just going round. And I'm not... If you... If you go too far into the super foam, what you're doing you're, is you're cutting the foam and you'll feel some resistance with the, um, the scissors. Okay, so it's all about just having a play, having a warm up. Okay, so rather than go straight into your artwork, then have a warm up, just have a row of perforations and just get your, your art, your hand in, so to speak. Okay. And once you get into it, the rhythm sort of starts to come along. So even my, my voice is slowing down. Even though I'm sort of concentrating, I just find it so much more easy doing it on the flap. Okay. So let's have a little um, hands up from everybody in the room. Who, <laughs> who Pico cuts flat and who Pico cuts in their hand? Be interesting to find out what everybody does because there isn't, a, there's no rules to say, oh, it's got to be done this way. It's got to be done that way. It's whatever works for you. So Helen is on the flat. There we go. Lorraine's in the hand. Hillary's flat, flat. Jill's in the hand. Yes, Jane, the snipping is, this snipping is very good practice for um, tomorrow evening. I'm really looking forward to um, the ODS tomorrow. Um, the ladies make it so easy for me to present it. So we've got in my hand, mainly due to eyesight. Yeah, that's a good point. Flat, flat with the snips, a mixture on the flat too. So it's a real mix, isn't it, of um, what people, um, what method they use. Okay, so we've had the, the question about um, on the flat or in the hand. What about um, fork 
or spoon position? Who does it with the fork position? And who does it with the spoon position? See, it's great having this interaction. I can imagine if everyone was in the room and everyone would be shouting, <laughs> the noise would be, well, at least I know people were there rather than me having to keep looking up. But you know what, that, it gives my eyes a little break. And the very focals definitely make a difference because I can sort of just go straight back in. Um, so, okay, what we've got, so we've got fork, we've got spoon, Maggie Craner never twists. No, that's right, you don't need to twist. Spoon, spoon, fork, fork. Jane depends on how her wrist is feeling. Um, I suppose that's the, the beauty of pico cutting, isn't it? It's one of those um, skills that is achievable with a little practice, but it's not sort of one of those skills that, right, you've got to do it this way, you've got to do it that way. I think it's what works for you as an individual. And... Um, and for me, it's on the flat in the spoon position. And then we're going to just, whoops, try not to punch your parchment. See, and then we can just go around. See, and some people will snip towards them. Okay, that'll be the next question. Okay, so we've had the in the hand or on the flat. We've now had the um, fork and spoon position. So the next question, oh, this, this, I like this game. Um, so the next question is, do you snip towards you or away from you? Towards or away? See what responses we get there. Okay, so we've got towards, 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 both, away, away. I really like this game. Okay, what I'm going to do now, just to make it easier, because this bit over here is really annoying me. So I was just trying to keep everything in one piece. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to roughly cut out all of my trees, okay, so that we're working on individual pieces. Makes sense, really, doesn't it? We we'll just cut them out roughly. So we've got mainly away, away. And so Lynn says, I'm new to it, and whatever I do, it still looks like a rat has nibbled it. Okay, um, so some, some tips then. Okay, if you're new to it, let's just go into these bits. Okay. Right. So, Lynn. Okay. One of the reasons it could be looking like that is um, it's all to do with the position of the scissors. Okay. So you need to be holding, I mean, you may already be doing this, but I'm just um, explaining um, for people that may be new to it. The scissors always need to be held over the waist, the bit that falls away. Okay, so the scissors, what you don't want to do is be holding the scissors over the image and pico cutting, because the pico cutting will be on the waist and the edge around the white line will look terrible okay so that's one reason why it could be looking like that okay another reason again is to do with your perforations okay if you haven't got a good perforation that can make a difference as well so when you're perforating with the two needle tool whether it be the bold or the fine if you don't sort of the two needle tool gives you that perfect pitch, 
in between each of the, the holes. So if you're not using a two needle tool, maybe you're just doing a one needle tool, um, that can make a difference. The other difference that it can, oh, speak, let's have a mouthful of coffee. Can be the position in which you're sort of holding the scissors. If you're going in too far, then it's actually the blade that's doing the cutting and not the tips. Um, another suggestion, I know it's really, it sounds really odd, but um, it did make me giggle when um, when Bob was new to it. <laughs> it was, so we was doing um, one of our summer retreats in at the rugby club in Crowbra and um, Linda was attending, Linda Williams was attending, so she was getting all messy and with the jelly plates and, and everything else. And um, and she was watching, Barb was demonstrating pico cutting at the front and Linda was watching. And um, the, the comment was along the lines of, um, do you need to change your glasses or do you need to wear glasses? Um, and that can make a big difference because if you can't see the holes in which you're putting the, the scissors into or you're going in too far, then either a magnifying glass or a decent pair of scissors. So Barb often used to use those magnifying um, glasses that you would buy in the pound shops and, and stuff like that that gives three, four, five times magnification which is fine, for, obviously, for a short period of time. But, um, but yeah, it can be something as simple as just the vision and a magnifying glass can make the difference or um, some magnifying glasses. A lot of the ladies at the parchment retreat had these little head torches with flip down magnifying glasses. Um, wondered what I'd walked into. So there's a few suggestions there. Um, on what could help, okay? Right, so we've cut this one out now. So now all I'm gonna do is take my normal pair of scissors. I'm gonna chop these bits off. Let me come in to there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my normal scissors. Let's turn this up on there. And I've just cut into the parchment by mistake, but I'm not so worried about that because it's going to be hidden by the layer on top. Now, if you don't want to do the pico cutting, then a good pair of scissors. And what you'll notice is that I'm holding the parchment, I'm holding the scissors in one position, and I'm actually turning my parchment into the blade. Of the scissors. It's the way that I've always sort of cut out when I used to do decoupage. Um, that would be the way that I would do it. I would still use a large pair of scissors like this, but I would turn the decoupage into the scissors. Okay. So, in it, I mean, back in the day, I would have used. Um, so I've just seen <laughs> Judy said cataract surgery helps. Well, yeah, maybe it, it's as extreme as that. Um, yeah, I mean, back in the day, I would have cut this out with a craft knife um, on a glass cutting mat. But the eyes are not what they used to be. So a good pair of scissors. Doesn't matter what size, what, again, whatever you feel comfortable with. In your hand um, and these are, are comfortable for me so this will give us our second layer now and I can't believe the time is already half past <laughs> I need to stop waffling don't I okay we will get even if we only assemble some of the layers we will get to assembling sum of all of the tree okay so okay so questions that we've had so far so we've had 
in the hand or on the flat, fork or spoon position, towards you or away. What other questions can we ask about pico cutting? There was one, but it's gone completely out of my head. Okay, so that's now given me whew, my second layer. So that's now going to sit. Need to zoom out a little bit. I'm not going to zoom out just yet because I want to carry on with the, the pico cutting. But let me bring this pico cutting up so that you can see. Okay, so if I, it's easier if I bring the work. To the camera if I can get the shot right okay there we go so that's my second layer right I think we're gonna have a sneaky peek of the one day special that's coming up so what I need to do is I need to Change the overhead camera so that it zooms out a bit. So we're going to go. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to go so fast. I reckon that'll do. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready to be teased? Um, I'd say Josie Davidson has worked her magic again, and these are going to be just as popular, I think, as the first ones. So we have four brand new lace duet plates from Josie Davison. These are A4 square, but this time they're based on a diagonal grid. Okay, so let me, sh right, I'm gonna be naughty. I'm gonna show you the first collection first. So this was Josie's first collection of ribbon plates, and these were based on a straight grid. Okay, so you can see, like a number of Josie's um, plates, that you, you have a right angle. This part here is embossed, and this part here has been drilled. So the ones in the straight collection, congratulations and best wishes. Then we have on your anniversary. Then we have wishing you a Merry Christmas. Now, all of the plates all of Josie's plates all come with a sort of an image of what it will look like, okay? And if I turn this over, you also get a cutting guide and instructions from Josie as well. And they're all unique to the individual plate, okay? So storage is really key. So this is our A4 square folder. So now, Let's have a look at the diagonal. So you'll notice the main difference between the straight and the diagonal is you have like a horseshoe. And the reason being is because the pattern changes on the downwards, okay? Now, I mean, this could be this way or it could be that way. We chose to do it this way, okay? So the pattern going across the top is different to the pattern coming down the side. So it's the same principle with the embossed dots and the perforated and the drilled ones. So we've got, hope you feel better soon. Let me show you. So this is what Josie has done as a little sampler with the ribbons. So if you choose to thread ribbon through or you choose not to, okay. So that's that one. Then, <coughs> excuse me, we have Seasons Greetings. So that's this one here. Okay. With and without the ribbon. Then the next one is Sending Love Your Way. This one here. Okay. And the next and final one is Thinking of You. Now, the beauty of all of these plates is that you can make a frame of any size. If you look at the, these pieces, you can see I've got a rectangle, I have a square, um, I've got a slimmer 
rectangle, I've got a smaller square. And over the course of the four hours on TV, we're going to show you different ways of doing that, okay, and how easy they are to do. Don't look at these and think, oh my goodness, I'm new to Groovy. I def these are beautiful and they are so achievable. Let's have a look at some samples that I've got here to, to tease you. So this one here has been created by Josie herself using Barbara's beautiful floral numbers in the middle. Okay, lovely ribbon. Then the next one is from Glynis. Okay, the next one is from Josie. See how the, the, they change? And you can have it that way with that border going across the top, or you can have it with that border going up the top. It's entirely up to you. This one from Jane shows that you can just do it as a border. So this would be great for um, bookmarks or just edging down the, the edge of your, your parchment. The next one is from Carol Baker. Look at these alphabets. They're also on the show as well. Then we have one from Francis. Beautiful, look at that. Gorgeous. Um, the next one is from the lovely Sheila. And Sheila's Pico cut some of the elements on each of the plates. Then we have another one just done as a border from Karen Jackson. And then the final one is from the lovely Glynis. Um, so these are sort of um, just a taster of what's coming up over the four hours. Now I've just seen a question. Uh, what pl plate mate do they fit into? They fit into, um, there's two different plate mates they'll fit into. There's the, um, what we call the A4 stroke A4 square plate mate for grids that Josie designed that comes with two extender bars for your A4 plates and it has lots of embossed patterns around the outside. Or you've got the beautiful, um, is it Art Nouveau or Art Deco um, plate mate as well. So it comes in two parts. Let me see if I can, let me bring, let me, I'll tell you what, I think I've got my one over there just to show you. Just have a look at that. Indulge the beauty of what um, Josie has created. And I'll just grab my plate mate because I've got it here in my folder just to show you which plate mate works for it. There we go. I'm back. Okay. So I've got mine. Let's pop that somewhere. So I've got mine in my folder. So this is the, um, what we call the plate mate for grids. But it's not just for grids. It's for any um, A4 or A4 square plate mates. So it comes with a beautiful decorative plate in the middle. And then it comes in two parts. Okay, mine's just held together with groovy tabs. You also get um, Mr. Dave's invention, which are the extender bars that makes it extend so you can put A4 plates in there, like the Linda Williams It's a Wrap. But this fits perfectly onto the 12 by 12 super foam black and white, okay? It gives you that complete flat surface to work on, okay? So that is the plate mate. If you leave your groovy tabs on there, then they act as a hinge so that you can fold it up and pop it into a folder, okay? So I hope that answered that question. Okay, oh, this chair, <laughs> as we say, on the floor, catching it. Right, should we carry on with this Christmas tree? So, and I can waffle while, waffle while I Pico cut. Okay, so let's go to the next one down and we'll come back in on this camera here. So let's go from this direction this time, see if I get a different with my Pico cutting. So 
in with the tips and then just snip. So yeah, so I'll be showcasing those um, four beautiful plates from Josie Davidson as the ODS on Create and Craft tomorrow at 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. And then again on Thursday at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Also on the show um, will be the original four straight designs. And we've got a fantastic offer on the Barbara's Floral Alphabet and Floral Numbers. Um, what else is on there? Well, there's lots of goodies on there. But the brand new is the beautiful and the one day special is the four new diagonal plates from Josie. Right, let me come back in on the overhead on this one. All right, let's zoom in. You know, I said we were going to finish this Christmas tree today. I don't know why I say things like this. I just need to not waffle, don't I? <laughs> there we go. Linda, you've got that plate, mate. Perfect. So you're halfway there. Because when you're working um, with the, the duet grids, it's best to work, even if your finished piece isn't going to be that big, it's always best to work with A4 parchment. Um, because you start in one corner and you work your way out. What you don't want to do is start with an A5 piece of parchment and then you start to put your, your frame in place and you run out of parchment, you run out of space on your parchment. Um, so therefore you need a plate mate to hold your plates in place and your parchment whilst you work. So, um, so for those of you that stocked up on your A4 parchment at the weekend, wasn't that a good idea? I'm just going to go around and pick a cup. See, I went in too far. See how I struggled there to snip? And that was because I went in too far with the snips. So what it was doing, it was trying to cut the foam as well. Okay. Oh, Mo. I won't be able to watch tomorrow. I'm going to see King Charles at York. Really looking forward to it. Wow. I, I'll forgive you for not tuning in um, if you're off to see the king. Wow. Is it York Races or is it an event in York, Mo? You'll have to tell us all about it afterwards. It does seem strange, doesn't it, saying I'm off to see the king? It sounds very... Um, I suppose, in a way, medieval. Um, because in my lifetime, and I'm sure many people at home's lifetime, it has always been the Queen. Very strange. But there you go. So he's unveiling a statue of his mum, the Queen, at York Minster. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Oh. That'll be a special day tomorrow, then. I have to take some pictures. I'm sure you will. But you can tell us all about it next week. You can tell us about it in the shack on Thursday with Bob at 10. Barb's back in the shack at 10 o'clock on Thursday. Um, I won't be in the room, unfortunately, because I'll be on TV at the same time. But I'm sure. See, with technology now, it's... I say it blows me away. It doesn't blow me away. With technology now, having the ability to um, be able to pause live t or pause tv um go back and watch it on rewind or on catch up um 
being able to sort of watch multi channels on different devices, whether you watch the TV on the TV and um, YouTube and Facebook on your, uh, a gadget, a phone or an iPad or other sort of tablet. Um, and then, because I really show my age now, I mean, I'm not showing too much of my age, but I remember obviously video recorders, VHS, and um, if there was something coming on in the early days, if you wanted to record something, you had to be watching what you was recording, or if you was recording, say you went to bed, you had to make sure that you left the TV or the video recorder on that particular channel. Um, because it couldn't record something on a, a different channel. And then things changed and you could be watching another channel while you was recording something on a different one. So things change, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Things change. Um, and now, with the beauty of the internet and technology, you can just go back and watch within reason certain stuff again and again. So it gives more sort of flexibility, I suppose. Because <clears throat> I, I often see when I'm in the shack with Bob and some people are watching TV while, whilst listening and um, to the shack or they're in the shack and they're listening to the TV or um it's just having the company isn't it someone to listen to i just hope that they don't waffle on too much like i do my watch is telling me it's time to stand up i just stood up <laughs> i think it means stand up and go for a walk but there you go So what's everyone's plans for the rest of the, the day? I mean, obviously, Mo's off to see the king. Um, anyone got anything that's as nice as that? Or maybe you're just going to the supermarket. Maybe it's time for your weekly shop or going to go for a walk in the park. What I've been doing recently is um, on a Saturday, if I'm not doing anything, in particular, then I've started um, taking the dog for long walks. And um, I've lived in Tunbridge Wells since 95. And um, I've never really explored because you just jump in the car and you drive here and you drive there. And um, over the last probably month, six weeks or so, what I've been trying to do is I'll take the dog I've got um, like a pedometer type thing on my phone and my watch. Um, and um, and then we just go walking and then we go to see, right, where does this path go to? Where does that path go to? Um, and found some beautiful, beautiful places that I didn't even know existed because it's not places you would find um, in a car. I mean, you drive down the side of the woods, um, but going into the woods and following the, the paths to see where they come from, and she loves it. We went out Saturday afternoon. It was a fine drizzle, um, but she had her coat on, I had my coat on, and we walked, and we did four miles. But it was lovely. My... <laughs> concern was, I mean, I, it <clears throat> it wasn't a concern really. Was it because I left? I normally go of a Saturday morning, but because I left it until about three o'clock in the afternoon, it was starting to get dark. <laughs> now I'm not afraid of the dark, but when you're in the middle of the woods and um, it's starting to get dark and it's raining, 
Um, but obviously I've got my phone with me. And again, going back to technology, um, I could just bring up a map to see exactly where I was and which direction I needed to, to head it towards to make sure it took me back onto the, the main road. <laughs> oh, that went a bit wrong there. Um, so yeah, so I think this weekend I'll definitely stick to the morning walk. Because if I do get lost and need rescuing, then um, at least <laughs> in daylight, I've got a better chance. Uh, but yeah, I'm really sort of just enjoying it and then seeing how far I've walked or we've walked. Um, over a period of an hour, two hours, just taking it all in. Um, I listen to my music as we're walking around. So it's just a nice sort of switch off and a distraction but the scenery is beautiful i suppose because when we went to wales early on the year on holiday we went through for loads of walks in woods and along the rivers and and everything else um i suppose i've just carried it on really okay how are we doing for time we are oh, five two okay I am going to do some assembly and luckily I've got some that are already cut out so um, let's pop that to one side and I'm going to bring in just a black piece of card and I'm go we're going to put it on the, the card blank okay now you could put this directly onto a card it's entirely up to you and for that we're going to use perga glue okay so let me get my base layer and you can see all we're going to do is stick this on top. Now, depending on the color, I need to zoom out a little bit. Apologies. Um, okay. Let's zoom out a little bit. Right about there, I reckon. Now, there's an easy way or there's an easy way. It, it really isn't um, that difficult, okay? So it depends how much you want to stick it down. I mean, it's parchment. You don't need to throw a pot of glue at it and, um, oh, sorry, this chair. It's a, maybe we get a mat <laughs> underneath. I'm using green parchment, okay? And I know that my layers are going to build up, so it's going to get darker and darker and darker. Now. Back in the day, it would have been just perga glue um, that we would use or brads to attach it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use our tape runners. Okay. So if I put some glue down the middle, I'm not going all the way down. I'm stopping just about there. Okay. I'm going to take, let's open this out flat. So I'm going to open this out. I'm going to position my tree in place. I'm going to press down. Now you can just about see the line of the parchment, okay? But because we're building it up on layer by layer, that's the next one, it's going to hide. <laughs> it's going to hide it. Okay, if you didn't have the tape runner, then what you would do, I'll do the last one with the glue. So what we're going to do now is we're only going to come down as far as here. And this is sufficient enough to hold the parchment in place. Okay, so that's in place there. Then... I want my next layer. So they're the ones that I've cut out. Sorry about this, I'm just reaching across. So then we've got that one. Okay, so we're just gonna put a bit of glue there. 
And what I'm doing, I'm lining up the star at the top. I'm positioning in that one. Then we've got our next layer. So although we're using the tape runner, it can't be seen. We've got the final two layers. So that one's going to go just on there. Just like so. As I say, it doesn't need um, a lot of addition, so to speak. Um, yeah, it doesn't. Um, there's no justification. Yeah. Okay, so that's that layer there. Now, for the top bit, I would see the glue coming through the star. Okay. So what we're going to do now, if we look at our piece of artwork here, where we've got our white work, then all I'm going to do is put a few little, that's way too much, but just so you can see it on camera, you want to put your sort of your perga glue behind any white work, okay? And then what you don't want to do, you don't want to squidge it. So you just gently pop that in place and just hold it down. Because you're, you're doing it um, behind a, an embossed part, you just sort of need to just hold it just so that it, it takes hold. Okay, so, so Christine said, I enjoyed my walk when I was at the retreat, walked down to the Pantiles on the Wednesday before I drove home. I took some lovely, Pantiles is a beautiful, beautiful place. So there we go, choices, glue, tape runner. Okay, so I use the tape runner for the bulk of the tree and then just a little bit of perga glue um, to the top. Okay, so now, and you can't see any glue whatsoever. If you were going to do the tree in just one layer, you didn't want to do a layered Christmas tree, then where you've done your white work in the various different areas, then you would just put little dots of glue behind some of the, the white work areas and then position it into place. And that will be more than sufficient to hold it where it needs to be. Okay. Look at that, 11 o'clock. <laughs> 10 to 11 according to the wall clock, but 11 o'clock on the computer and my watch. So um, we did it. Well, I say we did it. It was a, a combination of me doing it and some prep I'd already done. Um, so that's how you can assemble the layered Christmas tree. Next week, we're gonna have a look at the lovely stocking. Um, I've got a piece that Linda's prepared. It was for one of the TV demos, just like the Christmas tree was. Um, so we'll get that one out of the cover because there's some really lots of play on that one. Um, so next week is the stocking. Um, OGS tomorrow evening at six and nine, and then Thursday at 10 and two. Barb's back in the shack. If you had enough of me at, by the end of tomorrow, then do go and join Barb in the shack. Um, or watch both, have it on both if you can. Um, and then I'll be back in the Groovy Tuesday with you next week. So stay safe, enjoy whatever you're doing. Don't forget to post your finished Christmas trees um, on Clarity and Groovy Worldwide. And I will see you all next week. Thank you once again, as always, for joining me. And um, I'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.